All right, hello everyone. Welcome to Mr. Martin's math videos for uh, pre-calculus 12, this specific video. Um, today's lesson, as you can see, we are gonna be looking at section 5.3 from the textbook, uh, which is looking at the tangent function. So we've looked at, uh, in this trig function chapter, we've looked at the sine and cosine functions. Uh, pretty similar other than a small phase shift between the two wave kind of properties that we looked at. Review your previous notes if you need to. Um, but today we're specifically just looking at the tan function. Okay, the tan function definitely has some unique properties uh, when compared to the sine and cosine function uh, graphs. And so today we'll be looking at two things. We're going to be studying the graph of our final trig function y is equal to tan theta and also we're going to solve some problems modeled by trigonometry specifically the tan function all right and you'll be asked in your homework to uh, do some additional problems uh, like this as well uh, first things first let's start with the tangent function what is the general ratio of the tan function and so uh, back in grade 10, we learned, uh, we were taught that the tan function is, uh, remember, soka toa, right? Toa representing opposite over hypotenuse. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, opposite over adjacent, right? Toa. All right. Um, but in uh, pre-calc 11 and 12, we saw it, especially in pre-calc 12, looking at the unit circle specifically, we saw that we could define tan theta as the y coordinate of the point of intersect on our unit circle over the x coordinate uh, on the point along our unit circle. All right, uh, and that's the kind of the definition we're going to be really focusing on uh, today, more than the opposite over adjacent. Though obviously the y over x does fit the opposite over adjacent uh, definition as well. Okay, um, there's two ways that we could uh, describe this relationship. One is just as we mentioned, the ratio of the y coordinate to the x coordinate on the unit circle at angle theta. Okay, so whatever theta is, if you take the y coordinate of that point divided by the x coordinate of that point, that's going to be your tan theta ratio. Okay, um, the other definition we can come up with is the length of the line segment tangent to the unit circle at point A uh, with the coordinates one, zero. Okay, so um, we're gonna be looking at this with a different uh, demonstration. We're not gonna use the GeoGebra demonstration, um, but this is kind of the non-manipulative um, demonstration of that. So the point A that the you know was talked about above here is right here right with coordinates one and zero this is this is point a right here okay and a line tangent to the circle at this stage is the red line that we see going upwards okay uh, and that red line extends upwards it could also extend downwards um, and this you know tangent line could exist um, yeah going going upwards and downwards here but it's only drawn uh, upwards here Okay, um, so here, based on our first definition of tan theta, we could take this point A here and say, okay, at this point, tan theta is equal to y over x. Okay, let's see if I can fit that all in one line, make it clear. Tan theta is equal to y over x. Okay, so we would take the value of the y, which would be the height of point A from that x-axis, and then the value of x, which would be the coordinate of that point uh, away from the y-axis, and that would give us our tan theta. The second definition, though, is they tell us that that should actually be equal to the length of this red line. Should also be equal to tan 
theta. Okay, which seems like a strange definition, right? Um, because, you know, the, the y over x, we know that that's opposite over adjacent. This is a very familiar concept um, if we were to draw a triangle, right? You, you, you're aware of those things. Um, however, this tangent line is not something we've seen before, especially not to define uh, any of our trig functions. And so uh, a tan theta represents the length of this line. And mathematically, uh, it does so. Um, if you were to take... Um, so at 60 degrees here, our angle, we are, they tells us that at 60 degrees here, uh, we can, we actually know what this point is, right? If we think about our unit circle, all right, we at 60 degrees, our x coordinate would be one half, all right, and our y coordinate would be, uh, we'll pause here. Uh, I haven't, <laughs> square root three over two, of course. <laughs> so that's our x, y coordinate at 60 degrees, okay? Um, and so in order to find tan theta using our first definition, it would be our y coordinate, square root three over two, divided by one over two, all right? Uh, and just for kind of uh, argument's sake, we'll, kind of, we'll plug this in to, to get an answer um, as a decimal, or we can plug it in to find an answer in as a fraction form here. Whoa, my screen is... All right. Uh, so here this would be square root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1, right? Divide by reciprocal, we end up with an answer of square root three, okay? So here it says that tan, tan theta is equal to square root three, if we simplified uh, that y over x ratio, okay? Now, if we were to plug in square root three into our calculator, it's an irrational number, but we can get a, an approximation of the value of square root three. It gives us 1.73, okay? Uh, 1.73, zero or two well i'll just include one more decimal here all right um now if you look at the red line here and we know that the for point f the length of this red line the x value is one and the length of the red line is the y coordinate at point f okay uh, and here it's hard to tell exactly, but if you were to generalize kind of where point F lies on the Y coordinate of point F, we would get approximately 1.73. Actually, we would get exactly square root three, okay? So notice here that the length of the red line or the, the length of the tangent line on the unit circle is equal to our first definition of our tan theta function, which was y over x, okay? And it doesn't just work at this point. Both of these are equal to uh, square root 3. It doesn't just work at this specific point, right? We didn't just cherry pick this point. Uh, I'm going to use my overpriced Texas Instrument calculator here uh, app to demonstrate a moving model of this and so here my red line I have my tangent line um, which is the black line that is tangent to the blue circle and then my red line represents the angle okay and I have these two points that are being tracked simultaneously so I'm just gonna drop it somewhere okay I'm just gonna put it there all right now for the point that's on the blue circle I have my x and y value x is equal to 0 0.331 and y is equal to 0. 944. Okay, so if I solve for my tangent ratio, um, I would just have to do y over x. So let's do that in our calculator 0 0.944 divided by 0 0.331. I press enter and I get 2.85. And when I look at the point above, when the red line crosses the tangent black line, I see that the 2.85 that I got by dividing the y and the x coordinates on my unit circle is equal to the y coordinate of the tangent line. If 
QC. I can't annotate on this app, unfortunately. Um, but right at the, this, the, the black dot that is higher up, you see the coordinate of that black dot is 1 and 2. 0.85 okay so and that works anywhere else maybe we'll do one more demonstration a little bit lower here uh, x coordinate of on the unit circle I have an x coordinate of 0 0.683 and a y coordinate of 0 0.731 and when I find the tan theta tan ratio that uh, that gives me y divided by x is 0 0.731 divided by 0 0.683 I end up with 0 0.17, which again, lo and behold, is equal to the y value of the, where the, the red line intersects with the tangent line on the unit circle. Okay, uh, So that shows that both of our definitions that we came up with work uh, in defining the tan ratio. Okay, um, So make sure you understand both of those uh, and are able to answer both of those uh, this kinds of things. For the most part, it's not going to be a big deal moving forward as long as you're able to functionally use both definitions. Um, you'll be fine. It does make good multiple choice questions in the future, those types of things. Um, so, so be aware of that. Make sure you understand that. Rewatch uh, that demonstration. Uh, and you can maybe test some of the other points that I didn't test, but you were able to catch as you pause the video in between to see for yourself that it does work. Um, all right, so let's actually apply this uh, tan function. We're going to graph it. Uh, we're going to look at some of the qualities of the tan function, just like we did for the sine and cosine function. What is the amplitude? What is the period? What is the domain and range and all of these questions? We need to make sure that we know them for the tan function because I'm sure, as you can already tell, um, they're not going to be in line with what the sine function uh, and the cosine function uh, answers for those questions are. So they're gonna, we're going to have to explore what is true for the tan function, and what is different, what is the same compared to the sine and cosine function. So let's get started with our first example, graphing the tangent function. Graph the function y is equal to tan theta for negative 2 pi uh, for a domain of between negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. Okay. Uh, tips for graphing. Some of the things that you want to keep in mind when graphing the tan function is you want to kind of determine what are the key points of this function that you're going to graph. What are the points that are going to be easy to find that you can recognize that, yes, these are on the tan line? And then is there anywhere on the graph that tan theta becomes undefined? And what does that look like? How do you graph undefined? Uh, so we're going to take a look at that specifically here. Okay, and of course we're going to have our unit circle uh, in the top right corner here uh, as your reference. You should have this in your formula sheet as well um, to help kind of guide you along the way. So the, we have this table here for us. It's, it's filled out already, but we can follow it as we go around with the unit circle at the top. And so when we start at position zero, right, uh, our angle is zero, so we're looking at this spot here. OK, uh, we can see that um, our th angle is zero. Uh, if you look at the definition of um, tan theta as y over x, because our y coordinate is zero and our x is one, zero divided by one is zero. And so tan gives me zero. OK, and then the third column is the same uh, calculation, but in approximate form instead of exact form. Okay, because sometimes when you're graphing, uh, it, when you're answering a question, I do want exact form as much as possible, but sometimes when you're graphing, uh, approximate form is easier to work with. So that's why they give us both of these here. All right. Next, it's going to move to our first stop along the unit circle, right, which is pi over 6, also known as 30 degrees when we're dealing with degrees instead of radians. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and at 30 degrees here, we have our two points, uh, which is square root 3 over 2 and 1 half. And if you were to divide, maybe I'll do that uh, maybe on the side over here. If you were to divide uh, y over x, 1 half divided by square root 3 over 2, 
I'll just do a couple of them just so that you can uh, see it and then we'll I'll assume that you understand the math moving forward. So y tan theta is equal to y over x in this situation. Our y is 1 half and our x is square root 3 over 2 and when we're dividing fractions we multiply by the reciprocal, right? And so uh, 1 over 2 times um, 2 over square root 3, which is equal to 1 over square root 3. And by rationalizing the denominator, multiplying both at the top and the bottom by square root 3, I get square root 3 over 3 as uh, something you guys can see here, as what tan theta is equal to, okay? Um, all right, which ex is exactly what we get here, okay, at this stop along our unit circle, okay? Next stop along the unit circle is going to be pi over four, okay? And this is actually a really nice spot on the unit circle, these pi over four um, kind of uh, increments uh, or a quarter pi increments as you go around um, the unit circle because you get a value of tan that is one. And one is nicer as a nicer number to graph typically than some of the other numbers that uh, we'll have, okay? This is a special uh, Cartesian plane that we're gonna have that includes some of these irrational numbers. Uh, but on a typical Cartesian plane, one will be a much easier number to graph for the tan function than some of these other irrational numbers, okay? And it's equal to one because at 45 degrees or uh, pi over four, both my x and y value are the same. They're both uh, square root two over two. And when you divide the number by itself, you get one every time, okay? Um, let's see if I can uh, give a, a novel color here for my highlighter. Our fourth stop around our unit circle is at pi over three, okay, at 60 degrees. We saw this position early on in our notes right here, right? And so we did the math already. We know that tan theta at this point is square root three because our y value is square root three over two and our x value is one half. Uh, and that's what we get over here, all right? And an additional spot around the circle let's do uh, orange, is we're just going to do these uh, five spots because after that they repeat, okay, these same five spots. Uh, and so at 90 degrees here or pi over 2, I get an x value of 0 and a y value of 1. And so if you were to find the value of tan theta at this point, tan theta when your x value or your y value is one and your x value is zero, you get undefined, undefined, okay? Um, and that's what we end up here with our table of values. It says that it's undefined, all right? Um, the rest of this uh, chart you'll see is just going around the remainder of the unit circle. Um, and of course, based on the cast rule, we can see that quadrant one and quadrant uh, three are gonna give us positive tan values and quadrant two, quadrant four will give us negative tan values. And that's exactly what we hear, see here, right? Here in quadrant one, uh, we get positive tan values. In quadrant two, we get negative tan values in quadrant three, we get positive tan values. In quadrant four, we get negative tan values, okay? Based on the same points and the same arrangement of y over x. All right, so now let's graph this on a graph, okay? Um, most of these points we can just graph because uh, you, know, you know how to make a Cartesian plane, but there is that asymptote, or sorry, the undefined point. How do we graph that? Uh, and I just said it, that we're going to draw an asymptote line at that point, okay, to help us. Uh, one thing I recommend is that you do draw your asymptote lines first, uh, and that'll help you kind of aim 
your uh, tan function. So we're going to start by drawing our undefined points first. It's going to give us a, a restriction actually on our tan function. Okay, so here at pi over 2 it says it's undefined. So I draw this as an asymptote uh, uh, like this. So just a red line, dotted red line that goes top to bottom. Okay, and this is a line that the the asymptote is a line that the tan function will approach but never reach. Okay, and it will approach it for infinity but will never reach this line. Okay, um, so at pi over 2 there is no defined answer for tan theta. It's undefined, okay? It also happens again, if we look, it also happens again at, uh, actually, I'm going to leave it as smaller here. It also happens again at 3 pi over 2. So I'm going to put that into my graph here, 3 pi over 2. Okay, I'm going to draw it all the way down. All right. Um, where else do you think this would happen based on what you're seeing here? I would imagine that it would happen again because there's a difference of pi, right, between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. I would imagine another difference of pi would give me another asymptote. And indeed it does. Okay, even though it doesn't show up on our table. I can draw it here. All right. Uh, and also, if I go backwards pi, I would also expect that to be true. So I'm going to go back pi, and I get another asymptote here. All right. Okay, so I'm going to erase these little red lines here. All right. Now we're ready, ready to draw our tan function. We'll draw it in the first kind of between these two asymptotes here. Um, and go from there. Okay, so at zero, zero, at zero, we get zero. Okay, so that's that's easy enough, right? Um, our x-axis is our degrees and radians. Our y-axis is what the ratio of tan theta is equal to. So at zero, we get zero. That's our first point there. Okay, I'm going to reduce the size of my uh, drawing here. At pi over six, I get square root three over three, or in the approximate form here, it's given zero point five seven seven so i'm going to graph that at pi over six i get zero point five seven seven at pi over three oh at pi over well again pi we'll come back to that point at pi over three i get uh one point seven three so here one point seven three and then the line would go up continually here um same thing in the downwards uh, okay, so I'll, I'll just draw those two points, okay? At pi over 2, I know that it's an asymptote, so that's why I have the red line there. Let's continue on to 2 pi over 3. I get negative 1.73, okay? So um, at 2 pi over 3, I'm over here. I get negative 1.73, so that's this point here. All right? And at 5 pi over 6, I get negative 0 0.577, okay? And then at pi, I get 0. And at 7 pi over 6, hopefully you're kind of seeing the trend here, I'm going to get 0 0.577. And at 4 pi over 3, I'm going to get 1.73. And at 3 pi over 2, I end up with another uh, asymptote. And then same thing, 5 pi over 3 is negative 1.73. 11 pi over 6 is negative 5.77. 2 pi, I end up at 0. 13 pi over 6 is 0 0.577. And 7 pi over 3 is 1.73 here. Though that's not on our table either. Um, but we extrapolated here. Uh, and so based on this trend, I can also fill in the points on this left side of the y-axis where I know that at negative pi over 6, I would get negative 0 0.577, and negative pi over 3, I would get negative 1.73, okay? So now I can see that this isn't, these aren't creating little linear lines in between my asymptotes, right? There's some curve to this line. And we know that, as I said before, an asymptote is um, a line 
that the function approaches but never reaches, okay? So we can represent that a little bit in our drawn line where we have a line that's very close to the asymptote, swings out, and then swings back up. I'm just going to replace my hand here. And then approaches the asymptote without ever touching it again, okay? And I would draw this um, at each, between each asymptote. You're going to get the same function throughout or the same uh, shape of the function. Ooh. Uh, and then here you'd get kind of these three points here. And you can kind of extrapolate the line um, off the graph like that, okay? Actually, let me make that a little bit more precise. At least until we get off the graph. There we go. All right, so that's what we end up with. And of course, you guys have your graphing calculators. You'll always have your graphing calculators. Um, and so we can always double check what fine sine, oh, sorry, uh, tan theta looks like when we graph it. Now, here I graphed it in radian mode. And so I want to, everything's in radian mode. So I'm going to put my calculator in radian mode as well. Uh, it's in radian mode. Uh, and then I just put tan x as my variable. I press graph. Whoa, that's, that's a little intense. Let me, uh, there we go. Okay, so we see the green lines. We see those uh, asymptote lines coming down um, through the x-axis along the way. And this tan function repeats itself forever in the positive and negative directions, okay? And I can also zoom out and see, okay, does that function actually never cross the, the tan line? Um, and we, you know, I could keep scrolling forever and you would never seen, you would never seen any of the green lines cross the uh, asymptote, okay, the dotted green line. All right, you can kind of see it on your own calculator. Well, the calculator, ooh, zooming in the wrong way here. Calculator kind of draws this a little bit. It's not very good at drawing asymptotes. Um, I don't even know if it draws them at all. Um, it certainly doesn't draw them like this, okay? So, um, but when it looks like a little bit of an uh, EKG or ECG kind of graph, uh, you can imagine that there's an asymptote there. And that's why the line resets at the bottom and then climbs up again and then comes back down to the bottom and does that over and over and over again. Okay. All right. So based on this graph, now hopefully we have the information that we need to answer these questions. Okay. And I want you guys to go through uh, with what you see on the graph here and what you see in the table here and on your unit circle. See if you can determine uh, or answer all six of these questions. So I want you guys to pause the video, try it on your own, uh, give it a shot, make mistakes, relearn. Um, you can even, you know, check with friends in between. I'm not going anywhere. I'm paused. Um, so, you know, utilize that uh, and then unpause the video when you're ready to kind of see if you, you got it right. Okay. But give yourself a chance to face these questions with what you know now for the first time uh, before you just listen to me uh, answer the questions for you. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video. All right, hopefully uh, you guys were able to get through this either by yourself or uh, you know, connecting somehow using some technology with a friend um, or a family member to help you with these questions um, and gave them a fair shake before just watching me answer, answer them. Okay, so first question is, uh, is the function continuous over the interval of negative two pi is less than or equal to theta and less than or equal to two pi? Now here, so here the key to this question is, okay, what does it mean for it to be continuous? Okay, uh, and essentially what they're asking here is, um, is the line, you know, continue uh, to the right and to the left during the two pi, between two pi and negative two pi domain on your graph? Okay, uh, and here the answer would be no. Okay, and the answer would be no because you have points that are undefined, okay? Um, 
within that domain, okay, you have undefined points. Because of the undefined points, okay? The fact that you have asymptotes, those red lines that we talked about in our graph, in the domain that's uh, asked of you in the question means that it's not continuous, okay? All right, are there maximums and minimum values, right? Uh, does the line that goes up towards the asymptote um, or down towards the asymptote ever stop, right? And we said that an asymptote is something the, the line approaches but never reaches, so hopefully that kind of cued you in for your answer. Are there maximum and minimum values? No, these lines go on forever, okay? So with that in mind, the fact that there's no true maximum or minimum, then what is the amplitude of the tangent function, okay? And we remember the amplitude is the height uh, above or below the midline of our function, okay? In this case, the amplitude of the tan function is infinity, okay? It will go infinitely up and infinitely downwards, um, always approaching those asymptotes but never reaching them, all right? So close yet so far. Um, what is the period? Okay, so what is what represents one full cycle where the function repeats itself? Well, this is uh, pretty visually uh, apparent in our graph that we draw. We see that this graph obviously repeats itself. And if you were to take out your graphing calculator and look at that graph, it's even more apparent that the graph repeats itself. Whoa, that got a little funky there. Uh, there you go, right? The obvious, lots, of, lots of repeating happening here, so much so that it's causing my calculator to have some issues. Um, so yes, obviously it repeats itself. And uh, what is then the uh, domain for which it repeats itself? Okay, and here uh, the length on the x-axis that it would repeat itself. Uh, and you can see it, any one of these intervals will do either between negative two pi and positive, oh, negative pi over two and positive pi over two. Or you can look at, uh, pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, or you can look at 3 pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2. Uh, either way, these are all a difference of pi, okay? Uh, so that's our period. That's how long it takes for the function to complete one cycle and start a new cycle, okay? So what is the period? The period is pi. What is the domain? Okay, in this situation, the domain, as we see in our graphing calculator, this goes on forever and ever in both directions, okay? So there's no, uh, you know, restriction at one end or the other, okay? So it does include all real numbers. However, there are some exceptions. And so for, for defining our domain, it's easier to define the numbers that X can't be than the numbers that, the values that X can be. Right? Because the values that x can be are all real numbers except for the asymptotes. Okay, So in our domain, instead of defining all the numbers it can be, we're going to define the uh, numbers it can't be. And we're going to do so using a general formula um, that we've looked at. So x cannot equal, uh, what's our first asymptote? The address of our first asymptote on the x-axis is pi, uh, pi over 2. Okay, this point here. All right, that's the address of our first asymptote, pi over two. And if you multiply, or if you add, sorry, or subtract pi, I don't know, they'll be redundant, but you can, either way, uh, pi times n, pi to the n, um, to that pi over two, then that will define every single asymptote uh, in infinite directions, both in positive direction and in the negative direction, assuming that n is any uh, integer or even a whole number would work as well because we have plus minus uh, integer and the plus minus may be a little bit redundant, but we, you know, has it, has it de defined for sure uh, there. And then, of course, x would be... Uh, all the reals that do not uh, fall into the restriction we just defined. Okay, so kind of a strange way to represent a domain. Um, 
and then the range. Well, because our amplitude here uh, that we looked at at the a previous bullet point is infinity, that should give you an indication of what the range is, right? Range is all real Ooh, numbers, all right? Okay. Now for a word problem. Ha <laughs> ha, love me a good word problem. Um, so here, uh, again, it's in red, so I want you guys to give it a shot to read through the problem. A small plane is flying at a constant altitude of 6,000 meters. An observer sees the plane in the distance at a distance of D. Um, assume that the ground is flat in the region close to the observer. We want to draw a picture of the plane traveling over the observer. Okay, and so um, here, I'll, maybe I'll kind of help you guys with the diagram because sometimes the word problem is a little bit tricky here. So we have a plane, it's flying horizontally. This is plane, okay. Um, it's going to go, and there's this fella here, uh, or gal, okay, um, that is standing 6,000 feet, meters, below where the plane is going to uh, fly over. Okay, so this is 6,000 meters. All right, uh, and this person, okay, on the bottom here, can see the plane at any point in time. If the plane is over here, this individual will see the plane um, at a certain angle, right? Uh, and same thing if the plane is over here or at the very end, right? You can draw lines uh, all the way through here at any point, all right? And these would all be angles here. But just want to make sure here the 6,000 meters is when it's directly above, okay? So with this diagram, I want you guys uh, to... Uh, see if you can go through, walk through this question um, and answer B, C, D, and E, okay? Uh, so again, pause the video, work together, uh, see if you can get an answer, and then come back and pause the video, and we'll go through it together. All right, hopefully uh, you guys were able to get through this all right. Um, so first question it asks us is that to create a function that relates to the horizontal distance of the plane to the angle of the observer's line of sight in relation to the vertical. Okay, uh, so in this question here, we have uh, tan theta, right? Of course, we're gonna be dealing with tan in this situation here. Now, horizontal distance, they don't mean the distance of the diagonal line. They don't mean this line here, okay? Um, the horizontal distance to the observer is let's say the plane is actually at this first point here. The horizontal distance is this distance here, okay? And it gets shorter or, you know, this is, this is D1, this is D2, uh, and this is, you know, D3. These are the distances, um, horizontal distances from the observer and the plane, okay, at three different positions. All right. Okay, um, so create a function. So in this situation, um, if this is uh, my angle theta here, observer is plane. Yeah, if angle theta is measured from the line directly above the observer down to his line of sight to the plane, okay, our opposite value of that point will always be the horizontal distance and the adjacent value of that tan theta will always be this 6,000 meters. So that gives me the beginnings of a tan function, right? Um, so here, tan theta equals D over 6,000, okay? Where D is that horizontal distance, no matter where the plane finds itself, but the fact that that um, adjacent side doesn't change, it's always 6,000 meters, allows us to create this nice tan function. All right, graph your function uh, in your calculator, okay? 
Um, yeah, so in this situation, we want to isolate the d variable and solve for theta so we could rearrange this equation, right? Um, yeah, so this equation could rearrange as 6,000 tan theta is equal to d. Okay, so um, 6,000, uh, and I'm going to put this in degrees, okay, guys, we're going to work in degrees here. Degree, 6,000, 10, x, and I graph, and okay, I get this graph here, awesome, okay? Uh, and we see that repeating pattern, back that familiar tan line, okay? However, now obviously the numbers are larger because we've, you know, magnified or vertically stretched the tan function by a value of 6,000, right? Our A value here to stretch the vertical axis is 6,000. So obviously our Y axis values are gonna be exaggerated, very, very large. Uh, and then we have our first asymptote as well in sight near 100 degrees okay and hopefully you can kind of think about okay where in degrees exactly is that line okay so now we've done it, b we've graphed it um and so here it says where are the asymptotes of this graph and what do they represent does it make sense to consider more than one cycle for this graph um so where's this as asymptote? If I zoom in, I can see that the asymptote on my graph, again, your calculator is not going to be, you're going to have to maybe go into your table function uh, and see, you know, if you're able to see where it crosses over uh, on your table that you get undefined. Um, but for me, it's a you very clearly see that it's at 90, we get the asymptote. And why does that make sense? Why does 90 make sense? Okay, well, if I were to draw 90, an angle of 90 for my observer, this would be an angle of 90, right? And now this is the line of sight, right? This is a 90 degree angle. Let me just get rid of the first arrow there. Oh, there we go. 90 degree angle. This is my line of sight. If the plane is always 6,000 meters above, of, vertically above the observer, will the observer be able to see a plane if he's looking directly horizontal from uh, them? And the answer is no, right? As soon as the observer it looks a little bit upwards, even if the angle is close to 90 degrees, eventually this dotted line that I'm drawing, you know, and I'm not going to draw it super straight, but eventually it will cross the path of the plane. Um, but if the angle is exactly 90 degrees, that line of sight will never cross, oops, will never cross uh, paths with the trajectory of the plane, right? So that's why we have an asymptote there, is because there is no line of sight with the plane at 90 degrees. Um, so hopefully that is, uh, makes sense for you guys. Okay, so uh, at 90 degrees, uh, so here theta is equal to 90 degrees. Tan theta is undefined. Um, <clears throat> and why does that make sense? Um, because here the plane would have to be on the ground essentially for the observer to see the plane and it would no longer be 600 meters above the observer. The plane would have to be on the ground. Okay, of course this is ignoring the curvature of the earth and, and those types of things, um, but uh, still that would still account for the 6,000 meters. Um, and then what happens when theta is equal to zero degrees, okay? So again, our, our line of reference here is this line that goes directly above our observer, okay? So if we're at zero degrees, 
where is the plane relative to the observer? Well, the plane would be right here. So the plane would be directly above the observer. OK. All right. Uh, so hopefully that made some sense. If you need to rewatch some parts of it, that's why we record these. Um, and you also have access to the digital copy of these notes on uh, Teams if you're in my class. Otherwise, I'll try to link the uh, PDF notes for this video in the comments below so you can kind of fill these out for yourself if you're in just watching these videos to help yourself understand these math concepts in your own math class. Um, your homework at the bottom for my students is uh, 5.3 in the textbook and the following numbers uh, and you hand in your assignment directly into Teams. Thank you very much and